Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Dose. This week, we are talking about the search for significance inspired by a book of that same title. And the search or something like that search for significance, it drives really so much of what we do in life, doesn't it? It's our human nature to want to be significant. We all have a desire to be loved and accepted. And believe it or not, sometimes we can find that significance by identifying what's broken by naming the lie that we've told ourselves for a really long time and by hearing the truth that God has for us. So think with me for a moment about times in your life where you've faced shame. Now I realize that's a really wide ranging topic. And for some, maybe you've faced really debilitating experiences that have led to feelings of hopelessness, all associated with shame. I know that sometimes it takes a lifetime of help and counseling to work through those emotions. Shame can be a heavy, heavy topic. But I wanna also suggest that all of us have faced the emotion of shame at some point in our lives. I mean, think about decisions you've made. I think we could all point to a time where we regretted a decision or felt ashamed of our reaction to someone or something. And today I wanna to wonder with you, when has the lie of shame told you, I'm hopeless? I'm a lost cause. I am who I am and I can't change that. So I guess this is how it'll be forever. Well, I know for me after college, I spent a year just working and then I felt a pull to ministry. So I quit my job there and I moved to the cities to start seminary. I didn't necessarily want to be a pastor, but I was feeling that I could maybe work in the church somehow. And I wanted to explore that by taking some classes. So during the first couple of months that I was there, I saw a job posting and a church in the Twin Cities was hiring a person to work with kids and students. It was about 10 hours a week. And I thought, sure, I could probably do that job. I've done that before. This would be a great opportunity for me to practice the ministry I'm training for. So I applied for the job and got it. Well, I gotta tell you, after just a few weeks, I was really struggling. Now, that could have been for a lot of reasons, I realize. I was adjusting to life back as a student. It was a brand new city. I felt like I needed to have life figured out in a very short amount of time. And it was a brand new church with people I didn't know yet. Fast forward another few weeks, maybe a month and a half into the job, and I up and quit. Now, looking back, I'm not exactly sure what led me to that kind of rash decision to just quit. But I know one thing that I immediately felt, and that was shame. I had, I mean, I didn't feel like I could go back and just ask for the job back the next day. I mean, I had lost their trust. These people needed to move on. They needed to find somebody else for that position. And I felt so ashamed that I hadn't given it more time. And you know what that feeling of shame did? It turned into a full on shame cycle. I started second guessing everything. Am I even in the right place? Should I even be going into a ministry? Should I quit everything I'm doing and start over? End of story, done. Those were the questions I was playing over and over in my mind. And I think we all do this from time to time, don't we? As our shame level gets higher, we start to feel helpless. And sometimes, more seriously, we move into a pattern of self-sabotage. In those moments of shame or self-doubt, it's really hard to hear anything to contradict those messages that we're telling ourselves. But again, God's message, once we're able to hear it, speaks really powerfully to that shame lie we tell ourselves. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, we hear these words. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. Or another translation that I really like goes like this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, the new life has begun. And you know the great thing about this new creation, this new life? It doesn't happen with fireworks and flashes of light at one certain time. It happens over and over and over again. The moment you start to feel bogged down by shame or self-doubt, God says, oh, wait a minute, that does not define you. I am here to give you new life, new beginnings. The lie as you search for significance is that shame has to define you. But what if the truth that God gives you is regeneration? 
I just love the Webster definition, one of the Webster definitions of that word regeneration. It goes like this, renewal or restoration of a body, bodily part, or biological system such as a forest after injury or as a normal process. Did you hear that? A normal process. It's a normal process to be regenerated. This new life, your new life, has begun and shame does not define your significance. Hey, thanks for joining us this week on The Daily Dose as we walked through our search for significance. If you know someone who could really use this message or any of them from this week, would you do us a favor? Would you share that message with them? You could either share it on Facebook or maybe subscribe on YouTube knowing you could watch on demand. And if you watch on cable access, call a friend, invite a neighbor to watch with you next week. Next week, we're going to explore what makes us relatable to others, how God can bring peace in the midst of conflict, and how we can help restore relationships that seem broken beyond repair. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me heart open wine from the depths from the heights i will bring a sacrifice with these hands open wine hear my song hear my cry i will bring a sacrifice i will bring a sacrifice. Hey! I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Oh, hand on my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay my pride giving up all my rights take this life and let it shine shine shine